the baleful ballad of the bike thief. Stories of stolen cycles resound, lake ripple-like through this labyrinth town. They merge and morph into myth-fabric yarns and take on a terrible truth of their own. But I have beheld him, the bike thief, countenanced his cowed and crooked form, witnessed your wheels whisked off to Brick Lane Market and rescued my racer from his ranging grasp. Some say that he has supernatural fluid beating through his black and beady heart. I heard he was reared by rats in a rusty scrapyard, and some say he is scarcely man at all. Here is the account of my encounter with this cunning wraith. Solitary, in the window seat I sat, eating jerk chicken. The gloaming dust glinting on glass as I counted cars on old Kent Road. Locked to a lamppost at my left I could see my beautiful bicycle bright in the half-light. The jerk shop radio played reggae. A raster man came in to collect his curry goat, rice and peas. The smoky scent of barbecue sweetened the air and spice scorched my tongue as I savoured my meal. The tinny tones of transistor radio were eclipsed by a clatter and clamour outside. Approaching on the pavement and pulling a cart was a man. Cap peak pulled low, tracksuit collar pushed high, face hidden fully except for dark, furtive eyes. As he came closer, I saw the contents of his cart and the sight of it sickened my stomach. The trolley was piled with push bikes and packed with tools. Big, brutal bolt cutters, sharp, shiny, shimmering saws, and an angry-looking angle grinder. His identity dawned on me with dread when the clunk of his cart came to a halt and he stood still staring at something, held an object helpless in his hard gaze. A shiver of shock shook my spine as he crouched and cradled my lock in his cracked palms. My stomach lurched as I leapt from my seat and legged it out the door. Oi! I said as I stopped straight behind him, then furiously, What the fuck do you think you're fucking doing? Not one little look up from the lock in his hand. That's my bike, I bellowed to the back of his head. The bastard seemed oblivious to all but the lock. I shoved him on the shoulder and shunted him round. His malevolent eyes met mine for a moment and then he sprang up and sprinted at speed down the road. Bolting the barriers, barring my path, Date, darting dangerously through dense traffic, I clung to his tail but could not close the gap. Wiry and wild he was, like a sinuous sniper spiked with guile. The shape of his shadow shifting through the dark, twisting and turning, trying to shake me. Fired with ferocious anger, I followed his trail, breath burning my lungs, begging me to stop. Streams of sweat stinging my eyes, absolutely knackered, about to abandon the chase when... He cut a crafty left, still caught in my sights, and dipped down a dark alley. Fatal flaw the fool had made. Stuck in a stale, piss-stinking alley, barred between brick wall and fucked-off, fist-clenching, fight-hungry Yorkshireman. Cornered, he cowered by a bin and covered his head. rage rag of breath ripped through my chest and livid, I launched myself in a lunge at his jaw. But my fist found only air where his face should have been, and my carpels crunched into the concrete wall. Confused in the clammy night air, I scanned around, but found nothing except on the floor of that fetid alley, a black baseball cap. Like a wisp of white exhaust fume in the wind, he was gone. Back to my bike, I bemusedly wondered, sweat-soaked shirt stuck to my back, mashed up mitt, mangled and bleeding. My bike was still safe outside the jerk shop, but the tea-leafing tool trolley was notable by its pointed lack of presence at the place of the crime. Nerves knocked, I navigated home one-handed, pondering the puzzling points of this riddle. And from time to time I still catch a glimpse of a shadowy shape schlepping a cart, and each Sunday I see suspect-looking, dubious deals being done on market stalls, where bargain-hungry buyers beg no questions, and twisted traders tell no lies. Thus are the perils perpetuated of owning a pretty bike in London.